Hello everybody, I'm George the Guitar Guru from Beaumont Guitars and I'm here with Jay from Fano, Two Rock, and Tone King. What's up brother? How are you? Doing very good, so happy to be here. Can you can you all walk us through some of these amazing looking guitars? Sure. Yeah, I'm gonna walk you through our new line, which is the standard series coming out this year. What we have here is our two best selling body shapes, JM6 and the SP6. Um, these are hand assembled and distressed in the U.S. Have our proprietary pickups. All the distressing is done in the U.S. Compound radius necks, and they're going to map for $18.95. You can see all the configurations at FanoGuitars.com. I played this one too. Very nice. Yeah, man. They got that kind of just broken in, well loved feel. They come with the Levy's gig bag, and uh, you can see some of the light distressing there. Some of the checking starting to happen. That's beautiful. Battleguitars.com. So these are all the configurations available. Um, this is ice metallic blue. We have bull black here and the JM6 and then Olympic white candy apple red. Um, the, these are all the configurations that you can purchase. Want to go over there, Eric? So what we have here is our old facto line. This is our more custom line. Um, a lot more options available as far as like finishes. Um, the distress shape, you can pick your distress level as well. Oh, wow. um, pickups, you know, we use anything from uh, Lawlers to uh, Graylands to TV Jones and these. Um, and these are, they usually street for around three to over five, depending on the options uh, chosen on the guitar. And all the options on these can also be seen at uh, FanoGuitars.com. Very nice. Let's go over into the Tone King world. Beaumont Guitars, Mark, how are you? Nice to meet you. Can you just give us a quick walk through some of these amps? Sure. You want me to go through the product line? Yes, please. All right. Well, we've got a pretty simple product line. We have five different amps and three distinct kind of styles. We have two amps in more of the you know, genuine vintage Fender style, which is called the Imperial. 20 watts, and the Sky King is 35 watts, 6L6. And what they do is they kind of uh, take a little bit of the Blackface Deluxe, a little bit of the Tweed Deluxe, put them together, cathode biased output stage, nice resonant cabinet to get the sound of a well broken in 50 year old vintage amp. The second type of style of amp we have is the Falcon and the Falcon Grande, which is more of a, say, early 50 kind of sound. It's just fuller and fatter and a little more rounded on the top end. And it works really well in particular in low volume environments and at home. It, it, it still stays nice and fat at low volumes. And uh, we have a 12 watt called the Falcon. We have a 20 watt called the Falcon Grande. And uh, you know we've got the, the, the little 12 water is it's very basic. Volume tone and a three way voicing switch <laughs> to give you uh, three distinct voicings and the preamp. The, the Grande give, gives you reverb. Oh, nice. Okay. Uh, and it's kind of a, it's a pretty elaborate reverb with a dwell and mix knob that uh, lets you get as surfy as you want. It's uh, you can get pretty deep. It's also got a three button foot switch to go between those three voicings of the Falcon. Very cool. And uh, the last style of amp we make is, is called the Royalist which is uh, our take on the vintage British sound. Okay. And um, it's specifically designed for the span from like old JTM 45 kind of sound to like a JMB 50, but a low gain kind of uh, kind of British sound, not heavy metal, well, early metal, rock and roll, classic rock kind of thing. Mm. And uh, one thing that all the amplifiers contain is an Iron Man 2 attenuator which is uh, an attenuator technology I've been developing for the last couple of years, which is, is extremely transparent and uh, gives you a very natural sound and feel at a very low volume. 
and because uh, it's, it's very important these days that you be able to, to get the full range of, of tones from your amp at a low volume. That's just what people need. So we've, we've gone to uh, every single model having that attenuator. That's great. It's going to save a lot of people's ears. Absolutely. And we also build it into its own standalone little unit there that you can use with any amplifier. And that's great for tons of guitar players to, to use that. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, specifically, that's that box there, which we're showing new for the, this year. It's, it's, it only gives you 30 watts capacity, 8 ohms only, but it's state-of-the-art attenuation technology with a reactive load. It's got special compensation circuitry to maintain the tonal balance, even at the lowest levels. And it's a lot more natural sounding than most traditional attenuators. So I hope we can turn some people onto that that typically wouldn't go for an attenuator. We listen to it. It sounds amazing. Thanks. Thanks a lot. So thank you for your time, Mark. I appreciate it. We're headed over into the world of two rock amps. How are you guys doing? Good. How are you, Eric? Eric. Good. Okay, so basically Two Rock, if you're unfamiliar, was founded in 1999. I started out under uh, K&M Analog. Um, it was purchased by PPG in 2010. Um, so what we have here is the crystal. This is the first. We're going to start to hear and go this way. This is the crystal. Um, it is the, the famous circuit associated with Mr. Mayor. Um, we decided to make that available again since the original Mayor was only 25 units. We made the circuit available again under the crystal. Uh, radical design compared to you know what people are used to with the two rock aesthetic. Oh, yeah, I love the knobs and everything. Yeah, yeah, nice. yeah. Those are very high quality knobs, uh, spun aluminum knobs. Um, so you know, very clean, very lush reverb, incredibly responsive, nice soft attack. Um, great well platform actually. So, nice, man. It's beautiful. Yeah, and moving on, we have what's probably our you know, most well-known uh, accessible amplifier model. We've sold more units to this than any other model that we have. This is the Studio Pro. This particular model is the Studio Pro 35, which is probably, you know, of the Pro 35, of the Studio Pro, I'm sorry. Uh, the 35 probably sold more units than the rest. Um, so it was based on the classic reverb circuit which was you know probably you know one of the best circuits we ever you know designed at least from my you know my opinion and opinion of a lot of people as well but you know it was the most flexible it was a great great pedal platform you know it had the, the amazing overdrive you know when you dial it in uh so then we decided to pare that down and put that in a small package studio pro great pedal platform amazing clean tone it's kind of a fender gone hi-fi sort of thing um, very responsive. So a nice compact little package. It too. is, yeah, and you know that's that's probably where we found a good portion of our you know foothold with with the market with this particular amplifier it was just the fact that it was so small you can pick it up and you can go with it and it still had enough volume and and clarity to, to play the gigs to right? do the gigs, yeah. So you know, Studio Pro 35 is here to stay. We'll probably always have that because it, it's, you know, it offers something for pretty much everybody, you know, except for the high gain guys. But, you know, you can plug a pedal into that these days and you can get high gain too. So, uh, the new kit on the block is the Cardiff. This is uh, something very different for us. Uh, we ventured into the uh, British AC style territory. Two EL84s, the 15 watts. Uh, single easy 81 uh, tube rectifier, 212 AX7s in the preamp, um, all hand wired point to point, very responsive, very touch sensitive. Um, it gets a nice spanky, chimey clean in the lower volume settings as you crank the single volume knob up, starts to get dirtier, and then full bore is just all out rock and roll. Wow, awesome. Oh, we heard this one earlier, awesome amp yeah, too. Yeah. The sensor is uh, very much kind of a modern uh, take on an older dumbbell platform. Uh -huh. um, it was meant to be very fast and, and kind of aggressive uh, and kind of offer a little bit of something to those looking for extra gain. Um, it was the next step in evolution from the Game Master, which everybody heard the Game Master and they, they heard the name and they thought, oh, wow, this is probably going to have a ton of gain. It didn't have, you know, it wasn't high gain. So people were like, well, you know, give us something with a ton of gain. And, you know, it's got a ton of gain and it's, it has clarity. Clarity. Too. Clarity is a, a, a tenet of two-rock design. Sonic clarity and high performance are the two, probably the two things most associated with our brand, I'd say. Um, 
So, you know, Sensor has an excellent effects loop in the back. It's switchable series parallel, and it has send and return level control, so you can match it to whatever your pedal situation is. Um, clean channel, overdrive channel, as you saw. Um, no reverb, though. That's, that's where they... That's where we kind of drew the line there. We were like, we're going to, you know, go be a reverb from this model just simply because there's so many fantastic reverb pedals on the market that we wanted to kind of make that a feature set of the, the amazing effects loop that we had implemented into the, the model. Of course, that way you can get your own flavor on exactly, that. Exactly, exactly. So moving on, uh, we have the Studio Pro 35, uh, which we described earlier in head form. Now to kind of get a little, a little further into the details there that I kind of omitted earlier, uh, send and return reverb controls, uh, contour control, which if you're unfamiliar, uh, uh, contour control acts kind of like a presence control, but it's 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 a little nicer in the way that it, it works at all volume settings, whereas traditional presence controls tend to not be very effective at high volumes. Uh, so it's kind of it controls your clean top end at the at the output. And again, it's in a nice, neat little package too. Yep, yep. Uh, Three pull controls in the tone stack, a switchable bright switch, a mid boost, which you know, basically defeats the tone stack and gives you just everything. Okay. Uh, uh, engageable boost switch on the bass control there. You pull that out, it extends the low end response. Oh, that's, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's a fantastic model. Um, it also has a return level control on the back, which for some people can act a little bit like a second master volume. Okay. So you can churn up the gain in the master on the front and then control the overall volume with the level control on the back. So that's, that's pretty cool. a nice feature. It is. It really is. You know, a lot of people have liked to operate it that way. So. Uh, and we have our twin part up over here. We decided we want to bring two, you know, because people were really wanting to play through it. You know, we didn't want to have to have them standing in line here to, to play through it. Definitely, yeah. And then finally we arrive at the Coral, which is prototypical uh, double style DNA. Uh, overdrive special kind of evolution. It started out live years ago as the uh, K&M special, I believe, and then evolved into the Emerald, uh, and which evolved into the custom reverb SIG and traveled its way through three different versions, V1, V2, and V3, until we retired the V3 uh, this past year and developed the Coral. Uh, the Coral has a more refined uh, reverb, more refined clean tone, uh, the drive channel has been perfected. The voicing there has been has been refined. Uh, we've included separate uh, clean reverb uh, center and return controls, and also for on the back is the uh, overdrive channel center and another great feature. Yeah. yeah, because you know we were finding that, that what people were really looking for was the ability to uh, dial in a really nice clean lush reverb sound. But the downfall of that is that whenever you dial in a reverb. It reacts differently with a drive signal than it does with a clean signal. Of course. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And so we wanted to give people the ability to be able to tailor that the level of reverb to each channel. You know, so you switch from one to the other. There's not that, you know, oh, let me run over here and adjust my Change reverb. something. Yeah. Yeah. So a foot switchable overdrive and bypass. Okay. Uh, bypass is, as you might suspect, it defeats the tone stack as well. Gives you more of everything. So, nice little, little volume boost. Yeah, that's a great feature, too. A lot of people are going to find that handy. Yeah, absolutely. And on the front panel here, uh, we've got very, like the, the push pull switches over there in the Studio Pro. Right switch. This one is a mid boost, but it doesn't work in the same way. It's, it's actually the bypass is the mid boost over there. But this one just shifts the, the mid response a bit. Uh, deep switch works the same as the Studio Pro. This one right here, this EQ shift shifts the entire voicing of the amp, the, the way the tone stack works. And uh, it, we found that it was useful for guys who play uh, arch tops and the other highly resonant uh, instruments. It kind of, you know, it takes the low end out just a little bit so that, you know, it doesn't feed back when you're playing an arch top through it or a violin, as in the case of uh, one of our guys at the shop. He's a magnificent violin player. And he likes to plug into it, and he flips it over into EQ1, and it gives him the, the response that he needs to, okay. to play. So That's pretty cool. we got to get a clip of that at some point up online. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, bypass you know, EQ is basically this, just on the front panel, and then there's your channel switch there. So simple passive effects loop on the back. So uh, three speaker outs. 
there's the cathode bias slash fixed bias switch on the back, which kind of gives, you flip it over in the cathode bias mode, it gives the amp a little less headroom, so you can kind of get to that, that sweet spot a little sooner. So flip it over in the fixed bias mode, and it's, you know, all kinds of headroom and, and nice and punchy for those big gigs. That's really, really cool. Yeah. I'm going to... Of course, presence control. Well, thank you very much for your time, Eric. Absolutely. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. Everybody, I'm George from Beaumont Guitars, signing off. Bye-bye.